When you're making an Ultramarines list, you're almost bound to include a lot of bolter shots, and this list has up to 422 a turn. Hello and welcome back to Auspets Tactics, the strategy focused 40k channel where we're all about getting the most out of our miniatures on the tabletop. Now I've been saying for quite a while that I'd get round to doing an Ultramarines list, so sorry about the wait, all the other projects seem to have a habit of distracting me. The list we'll be looking at today is a 2000 point armor list, that's entirely Codex Chapter Ultramarines. I thought I'd do a slightly different take by not either building around Gilliman or Marnius Kalgar, but instead going for a few lesser characters and focusing on the advantages of some of their warlord traits, relics and stratagems. We've gone for two battalions for this one to get a decent amount of command points on the board, and also because we can farm them slightly by getting them back on a 5 up. This list is aiming to get a whole load of bodies into the midfield, advancing ever forward, pouring down bolter shot after bolter shot, before hopefully getting into close combat to finish the job. So without further ado, let's take a look. So there are three main parts of this list, a shooting castle at the back, a bunch of intercessor squads acting as long range shooting support and screening units, and an advancing tide of aggressors led by some characters. Let's talk about the shooting castle first. So here we have our warlord who's keeping nice and safe at the back, he's a chapter master with a storm bolter, a power fist, and taking the seal of oath relic, which I believe is one of the nastiest relics the ultramarines have to offer. He's going to be sat next to three stalker tanks, a contemptor mortis dreadnought, and a thunderfire cannon and he'll be aiming to keep all of them within his range for his aura. The Seal of Oath will allow us to label the enemy's highest priority threat, and get four rerolls to hit and wound against that, and I chose the Stalker tanks because having Strength 7, AP-1, Damage 2 weapons, they're going to be pretty much ideal recipients of the rerolls, hits and wounds. Hopefully we'll aim to focus on our Seal of Oath target first turn, when they're in Devastator Doctrine to also get AP-2. To further buff their lethality, we have a tech marine here with Master of the Forge and Master of Machines. Master of Machines gives a plus one to hit aura for nearby vehicles, so even against non-flying targets, the stalkers will be hitting on threes and re-rolling all misses with the chapter master aura. So they'll be absolutely hilariously accurate and should put out some very solid firepower every single turn, whether against air or ground targets. And if we're firing them against air, I'll certainly be making use of the Skyfire stratagem, as we have a decent number of command points to play with. The Contemptor Mortis Dreadnought will be armed with four LAS cannons, and as our primary source of ranged anti-tank, he could also go after the Seal of Oath target, but after this he just puts out some incredibly reliable fire support that won't care about modifiers to hit at all, due to being plus one to hit on Ballistic Skill 2 up and having four rerolls. If the enemy does try and single him out as our main anti-tank source, then we'll use Duty Eternal, making him incredibly obnoxious to remove between half damage and his five up immortal save. Finally, our Thunderfire Cannon will certainly be considering using the Tremor Shell Stratagem, and potentially even firing again if it's vital to our strategy. Tremor Shells could help us slow down important enemy assets coming into the battle, or he can just plink away at enemy units that are out of line of sight, and hopefully clear us some objectives. Finally, as the Tech Marine is a master of the forge, he can heal any of these vehicles for three wounds a turn, and the Tech Marine with the Thunderfire Cannon can also heal one of these guys. So even if they damage multiple tanks per turn, then we have two different sources of healing, so the firebase is quite durable. Additionally, the stalkers all have hunter killer missiles and storm bolters, for a little bit of added firepower to use all of these buffs. The chapter master and the tech marine also have a storm bolter to net us another 8 bolter shots, and the chapter master has a power fist to act as a powerful close combat deterrent, should the enemy break through or deep strike nearby. The next part of this list are 6 units of intercessors with bolt rifles. These guys will be doing the less glamorous role of being screening units, sitting on objectives, potentially getting into melee with enemy light infantry elements that are advancing, and being a general workhorse of the army. In Ultramarine's Tactical Doctrine Turn 2, they'll be able to move and shoot two rounds at 30 inches and AP-2, so they'll put out a really decent amount of reliable anti-infantry fire, and we also might be able to get some of them in range of the Chapter Master's re-roll to hit aura, though I wouldn't stress too much about doing this. These guys will ensure that we have some solid midfield presence for any objectives, and help us rack up those victory points while also plinky away with their bolters. Finally, we have the main punch of the army, which is three units of six aggressors, with Boltstorm Gauntlets and Fragstorm Grenade Launchers. These are pretty much the archetypical Ultramarines unit at the moment, because they can use Sounds of Gilliman to move five inches and then double tap with all of their weapons, so from turn two they will have a theoretical 19 shots each, 
netting us a theoretical maximum of 342 shots if they all survive turn 1 and if they're all in range. I know that isn't particularly likely, but even if a fair few of them survive, that's still going to be a lot of shots. They pack a very solid melee punch as well, with a crazy number of power fist attacks between the lot of them, meaning that the enemy is really not going to want to come too close to the midfield, so we can bully them off any central objectives, and hopefully rip apart any big heavy hitters that get too close. To support these guys, we have a Lieutenant with a Storm Bolter Power Fist and the Reliquary of Vengeance Relic, which will give them a plus one attack aura for the turn they need it when they get into close combat, letting us a bunch of other helpful Power Fist attacks, and of course his rerolls one to wounds ability. Finally, we've made use of one of the Ultramarine special characters, Chaplain Cassius in this list, who is in my opinion the best point for point character out of the Ultramarine's Codex. Having two litanies per turn without having to invest command points in a Master of Sanctity, meaning that he can run along with the aggressors, give one unit plus one to hit, and plus one to wound the closest targets, and maybe switch to full rerolls to hit when they get into close combat. I would also strongly consider running the Chapter Master that's usually back with the gunline tanks with the aggressor blob, if I knew I was playing against a list which had an enormous amount of horde bodies, as these aggressors with the full rerolls to hit will just absolutely decimate any sort of infantry. Plus, if you have a unit that's guaranteed to go up front and centre in the enemy army, say something like a Knight Gallant, for example, you might well get more value from the Seal of Oath from the hundreds of aggressor shots that you're going to be shooting out, and you could also potentially walk up the Contemptor along with the aggressors to also benefit from the Chapter Master's aura. So there are definitely different ways to play this list, depending on your opponent. In terms of some of the common tricks I'd like to play with this list, I'd certainly be thinking about putting one of the aggressor squads into Tactical Doctrine Turn 1 to give us some first turn double firing aggressors if they have range on the enemy. If they don't, I would certainly happily advance the aggressors, as getting some bolter shots off is better than nothing, and of course you'll gain all of that lovely movement for the all-important Turn 2 and Tactical Doctrine. Rapid Redeployment is one of the Ultramarine's best stratagems, and I'd certainly consider this as well particularly if your opponent has set up some units deliberately to get line of sight on the Contemptor or the Thunderfire, then you could cheekily move them out of line of sight and mess with their plans, or you could redeploy some of the aggressors to counter an infantry threat on one side of the battlefield if needed. I'm not sure I'd use it every game, but it's a decent tool to react to your opponent's positioning and get a lot more value out of your units. In terms of weaknesses for this list, one of my main concerns is that the aggressors, while being hilariously damaging in terms of firepower, aren't actually the toughest units in the world to take out from return shooting. They're not bad with toughness 5 and 3 wounds apiece, but against some dedicated anti-heavy infantry firepower, they're going to be going down quite quickly. This does have the advantage that you'll be taking some of the heat off your other elements, as all of the models in the army are at least somewhat tough, well-armoured multi-wound models. Any light infantry fire that your opponent might have is likely to be fairly ineffectual, particularly if you try and keep most of the list in cover where possible. Another concern is not having an absolute ton of ranged anti-tank. If that Contempt to Mortis does get focused turn 1 despite Duty Eternal and your redeploy shenanigans, then you could be in for a bit of a bad time against an army that has a lot of backfield armour elements that your aggressors are going to struggle to reach. If we do lose too much of our long-ranged anti-tank turn 1, we'd certainly have to focus on playing the objective game and eliminating all of the enemy's forward assets to hopefully outscore them for long enough before the rest of the army gradually gets worn down by any existing enemy armour that hasn't been dealt with. Some other options for changing this list around would be to include some more of the Ultramarine's unique special characters. Particularly Marnius Kalgar or Gilliman would be great to run with the aggressors, as both are powerful, durable melee units that also provide amazing buffs to those nearby them. In this list I was definitely going for the option of more bodies and keep the characters cheap, but particularly in Ultramarines you can go very character heavy indeed. Tagirius is another solid option. To advance with the aggressors perhaps, giving one unit minus one to hit per turn, farming a command point from Scry's Gaze and maybe smiting a bit. We could also run some of the backfield elements as different units, particularly repulse executioners can be quite good in an ultramarines list, as they can be very mobile having a 10 inch move while still counting as stationary for the main gun when they're in tactical doctrine, so they can be a very mobile source of long range anti-tank fire. So let me know your thoughts on the list down in the comments below. Any obvious mistakes or oversights or things that you'd change? I'd like to hear it all. Ultramarines are one of the armies that doesn't have quite as many absolute knockout blows in terms of devastating stratagems or buffs to its long-range heavy weapon firepower, but I think that they have a lot of interesting unique options and it can come together to make a really decent force on the tabletop. Thanks for listening to Allspets Tactics. 
Feel free to subscribe if you'd like to hear more content like this in the future. And feel free to support my Patreon page if you are finding my content helpful to you. Thanks again for listening, and I'll hope to see you guys next time.